Welcome to California Unearthed. I am in the quaint and historic town of Weaverville, California. Weaverville sits about 45 minutes away from Redding, California and Interstate 5, about an hour and a half, almost two hours to the coast over in Arcata. And like I said, I'm right on the corner. Highway 3 goes up to the Trinity Alps and Trinity Lake. And Highway 299 is the main thoroughfare uh, here through town. The building behind me here is the county courthouse. Weaverville is the county seat of Trinity County. And Trinity County is a fairly large county with a fairly small population. Uh, so Weaverville, which is a very small town, is the county seat. The building behind me was built 1854 as the county courthouse and has been in continuous use as a county courthouse ever since. And so we're going to take a walk around, check out some historic buildings, some historic plaques, uh, give you guys a little sneak peek into Weaverville and its history. Uh, Weaverville is a gold rush town and it started around, I believe it was 1850 um, after Gold was discovered in 1848 by John Marshall down in Coloma, California on the American River. Um, the gold panners and pioneers traveled up from the Sacramento area up to Northern California, founded the town of Shasta, and then came farther west. And we are now into the Weaverville area. And the funny thing about this area is it's a little gem hidden away from anything else. Like I said, we're 45 minutes from any other town. So it's pretty cool little uh, valley that this sits in. So let's go check out some uh, historic places here in Weaverville. So here we have the plaque uh, describing the history of Weaverville. Let's see if we can get Cheryl to read this to you and give you a little Weaverville history. Uh, the town was created in 1850 by the early miners, merchants, craftsmen, and wor worshippers as the gold mining and commercial center of the area. Here they built of brick, earth, and wood the examples of white and Chinese culture that you now see. It survived numerous conflagrations and depressions to be honored in the National Register of Historic Places in 1971 as a community of unusual historical significance relating to the Gold Rush period. And that was um, erected by E. Clampus Vitus in 1972. And then there's a second one, Mountain Charlie, Charles Henry Mountain Charlie McGiernan, a native of Ireland made his fortune as a teamster near the Weaverville mines. Business was prosperous until the local natives ran his mules off, forcing him to move to Santa Clara County, where he continued his teamster operation among his many other ventures and became the celestial Clem Patriarch of the Ancient and Honorable Order of E. Clampus Vitus, Mountain Charlie Chapter, his motto, Right Wrongs Nobody, dedicated November 8, 1980. So the one thing that I forgot to mention that I probably is really, really important is the town of Weaverville sits in the little valley right here, but not only does it sit in the valley, it also sits very close to the Trinity River. The Trinity River is a lifeblood for a town. Any river is a lifeblood for any town. So with close approximation to the river and living in a valley right here, this made the perfect spot for a settlement. Let's continue on. So we're gonna start down the historic district of Weaverville. This is actually on the National Register of Historic Places. It's a National Register Historic uh, neighborhood so that is awesome that is really cool so that means that this area is protected uh, so we're gonna go ahead and this on both sides of 299 we're gonna go on one side then the other uh, check this part out and then we're gonna go farther down the road where uh, the museum is and where the Joss house 
is that as well. So we'll go check that out as well. Cooley doom, cooley doom, cooley doom, my darling. So like I said, Weaverville was a gold rush town. It started off as a gold rush town in the 1850s. After the gold had petered out in the 1860s, 1870s, it then became a lumber town up until the uh, early 1900s. Uh, but back to the gold rush history part of this, we'll get back to the lumber industry later on, but back to gold rush. Um, I am now standing in front of a very interesting plaque that I will have Cheryl read to you because my bad eyesight, I can't read it. But this is one of many plaques that has been put up by E. Clampus Vitus, the uh, Historic Society of Fraternal Order that once, I, once again, like I've said before, I'll do a whole nother video on E. Clampus Vitus just by themselves. So I'm gonna have Cheryl go ahead and read this plaque for you. And it, like I said, very interesting story. I think you're gonna enjoy this. Spanish Corral. In this lot stood the Spanish Corral, a dance hall of ill repute uh, for over a decade during the gold rush. Two legislative acts of 1855 banned gambling and prostitution. Every fourth business in town was a saloon with ladies of the night and soiled doves. Isaac Cox wrote of Weaverville, the entire town seemed a red light district, but by 1860, many prostitutes had been run out of town. The ladies at the Spanish Corral wanted out. They hired some packers to take them to Shasta. A running gun battle ensued between the owner of the Spanish Corral and the woman and packers down Main Street. Over 60 rounds were fired, but not a single soul was injured. From the three-story Chinese boomerang to the Spanish Corral, Isaac Cock wrote, What a hell was there! The dark regions of crime had vomited forth her stories of lewdness, ignorance, and avarice, of meanness, and society cantankering rhapsody, yet liberty and freedom was there. Some of the most notable women were Charlotte Bush, Medora McGinchy, Madame Marie Lagagnier, Lebeau or Lafonte, or Lafont, yeah, Lafontaine, China M, and the infamous Julia C. Bullitt, who rose to fame in Virginia City, Nevada. The respectability of the town was gained by the fires of 1859 and 1863, cleansing the town of its wickedness and debauchery. So it's stories like this that make these sort of little gold rush towns really, really interesting. And you wouldn't know stories like this unless you knew the history. And E. Clampus Vitus, the Clampers, come up with great stories like this. We're gonna come up with a few more plaques here in Weaverville, but I think this is one of the most interesting ones here. It's a lot of fun to read. Um, so we're, let's get going and we'll check out the rest of town. So one of the most unique things here in Weaverville in downtown is a spiral staircase. Uh, if you look around downtown here as we're walking around, all these buildings are pretty much two-story buildings. That's the highest building here in Trinity County is two stories. They don't go any higher than that. And they have these really cool spiral staircases on the outside. Um, I haven't really seen this anywhere else. It's really cool, really interesting. And we'll climb up one of these and check out the view uh, here at some point. So this is the view from uh, one of the balconies. So we are across the street now, um, and the reason why I came across the street was to show you guys the Weaverville Hotel, which is over there. This is it's still a hotel. It has been the Weaverville Hotel in continuous use since its beginnings in the 1850s. I think that is awesome. That is so, so cool. That it is still a hotel, and it's still operating as a hotel for that many years and for that long. It was just insane. 
And what's really cool about this downtown area is the walkways are all covered. You don't see that very often, but they're all covered walkways. So you kind of see that in like uh, New Orleans or some of these older other gold rush uh, type towns in the gold country of outside of Sacramento area. And so uh, that's kind of a unique thing here. So let's go on down the, uh, the walkway here and I'll show you what those look like. All right, so this is another cool old building. It has the New Yorker bar underneath of it. It's the uh, Clamper Bar here in Weaverville, where uh, us Eclampus Vitus guys go to have our libations. But it, you'll also notice the spiral staircases um, along the, the walkway here, the ones I was pointing out earlier. It makes this little town really unique to have these spiral staircases and this covered walkway is really, really cool. Uh, it's kind of a nice place to walk at night uh, just before dark, it's really neat. So let's continue on. Is this the movie theater? No, this is the Diggins. Oh, the Diggins. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is one of the many plaques around town. This was the, uh, the drugstore at one time. Like I said before, it's on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the car building. Uh, this is where the New Yorker bar is now. And so if you read here, uh, John Carr, I'm uh, sure I'll read this to you since my blind eye, I can't read very well anymore. <laughs> Uh, John Carr and his partners came to Weaverville in the spring of 1851. Carr was a blacksmith and realized immediately the need to set up shop. He did so on this site. John Carr became known as the Vulcan and established the first blacksmith shop in, the Trin in Trinity County. He roofed the pole structures with cow hides to get the shade he needed to keep the right heat on the iron. In 1856, after many town fires, Carr built a brick building to replace the hides in many, oh, in May, I'm sorry, um, 1857, leased it to James Hamilton to be used as saloon and billiard, billiard parlor. In late 1857, the business was sold to Frank and John Young and was known as the Bank Exchange Saloon. The fire of 1863 gutted the building. The building was rebuilt and Frank Young continued the Bank Exchange Saloon. The car sold to William Todd in 1875. The building had succession of owners until sold to Trinity County in 1917 to, to be used as the new free library. It remained the county library until 1992. The building again had succession of owners until it was once again purchased to house the New York Saloon in 2015. This is the only theater in town that's been here for many, many decades. I don't know the exact date that it uh, was first established, but I know that it is at least 20s, 30s, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, I need to do a little more history on the movie theater. But the funny part about this was the guy who used to own the theater was my movie instructor, uh, film instructor at Shasta College uh, in Redding, California. So uh, he told us very cool stories about when he used to own this theater. Uh, so right now, I believe The Lion King is being played uh, in the theater right now. And I believe the very first movie that was ever played here was a movie that was filmed here in Weaverville and it had to do with the gold rush and gold history and so that was kind of a cool thing. So this is the local brewery at one point. 
that Cheryl was telling me about. Is it a still brewery? No. No, okay. And a little view down Main Street. And then this is the beginning of what was known as Chinatown. So here's the information on the brewery. What's I have to say there, Cheryl? Uh, one of four Gold Rush breweries in Weaverville, the Pacific Brewery building, was built by Fred Walters in 1855. Walters sold, sold to Lorenz and Hagelman in 1865. John and Mikkel bought the business from Lorenz in 1878. Meckel died in 1889, but the Meckel brothers' brewery continued with his two sons, John Jr. and Albert Christian, until Prohibition in 1919, U.S. Health Bulletins proclaimed the Meckel Brothers beer as the purest and the best. After 1919, the building sat idle, was used as the stage stop, feed storage, and office until remodeled into a restaurant in the early 1970s. Now, the one thing I guess I get out of this is the name Lorenz. I wonder if this is the same guy or a relation to the Lorenz in Redding, California with the Lorenz Hotel. Oh, maybe. I'm pretty sure that they are related, if not the same guy. Um, I don't know exactly who started the Lorenz Hotel in Redding, but it was probably either him or a relation of this man. So this is California State Park. This is the Joss House. This is where the Chinese history of Weaverville comes in. You have the gold rush, and with the gold rush, you have an influx of Chinese coming to get their fortune as well, like everybody else. Um, unfortunately, the Chinese history in the gold rush era is very bleak for the Chinese. Uh, it's a very sad, sad history for them. Uh, we have a plaque here uh, dedicated to this Joss house and what this place is is it is a place of worship place of education a temple um, is all is a community center for the local Chinese community and what's, what's unique about this Joss house is the only wooden Joss house left in the United States and it is one of five Joss houses left in California. So they're very rare here in California and very rare in the United States. This is the only Joss house uh, left here in the Northern California area. But I know if there's five left, like I said, in California, but this is the only wooden one left in the United States. So moving down from the Joss house, we're gonna go visit that in a whole separate video. Um, that deserves a whole video to itself. Uh, so we're going to move down from there to this museum. This is a very popular place here in Weaverville. Uh, not only is it a museum, it is also a uh, historical society and a genealogical library as well. So if you have some genealogical history that you need to do uh, and you have family members here in Trinity County, this is the place to do it. And it is also the museum, the local museum as well. Let's go in and check it out. So this museum pretty much has a mishmash of everything. We have a Native American community here, obviously before the Gold Rush community came in. We have Chinese community, Gold Rush history. Pretty much has everything uh, in Weaverville history before to modern day.
That's the gold scales. This is gold scales from like the assessor's office. You bring in your gold dust. Give you money. Oh, here we go. Look at this, Cyril. This is a fire lookout tower. This is what the towers look like for a fire lookout. So this is very important in this area. This is a high fire danger. So this is actually uh, came out of one of the local bars here in town it is what they refer to as uh, the old timey jukebox. So this disc plays about three minutes worth of, uh, worth of music. And this actually came out of one of the bars here in Weaverville. So this is original. Upstairs. Mm -hmm. So there's an interesting story to this cannon. This is only a section of the cannon, but this cannon was in the Spanish American War, and Weaverville acquired the cannon after the war. And they put this up on the hillside here in town and on certain events like 4th of July, Memorial Day, and special events, they would fire this cannon off. And you could hear it all throughout Weaverville and throughout the canyon. And at one point in time, somebody apparently didn't like <laughs> this cannon going off. And so a group of guys went up and ended up blowing this thing up. And some years later, some decades later, uh, somebody went up there and ended up finding this buried in the hillside somewhere. And so this is the only piece left that they found of the original cannon. Uh, this obviously is not the entire, the entire cannon. So we are in another blacksmith shop. This one is in Weaverville here. You see behind me, I'm gonna try to put the camera through here and uh, see what we can see as far as tools go, uh, where the fire was and all that.
So we are here kind of late in the day. So a couple of these uh, exhibits have been closed today. Uh, I wanted to get into the stamp mill and there's another barn that has some wagons and stagecoaches and stuff like that in it, but that's closed as well. Uh, that'll have to be for another trip. Uh, we only live 45 minutes away, so we will definitely be back to hit those buildings. Uh, but we are going to go on the other side of the street. We have hit the end of the historic district here in Weaverville. On one side, we're going to go on the other side of the street, see if we can't find some more plaques, some more historic buildings. Um, I know there's one right across the street, but we'll check that out right when we get to it. So there is a date plaque on this. It says that the church was established in 1875 and this church was erected in 1891 and has been here ever since. And like I said before, has survived many, many fires. So this is a really cool little place. They sure don't build them like this anymore. This is truly Americana. The white picket fence. Oh, look at the deer. Only in Weaverville. Oh, look at the fawns. <laughs> that's the thing, you have fawns and deers right next to a busy highway. So this building here, uh, this is a local art gallery, and what's really interesting about this, I don't know the exact year that this was built, um, I know it was in the 1800s, and I believe the last person who bought it donated it to the community of Weaverville as a art studio, and that was around in 1960. Uh, they believe that Weaverville needed to have an art center, and I, I think that was a great idea, especially in the 1960s. That's when these art centers started popping up, and Weaverville is a perfect spot for something like this. Uh, it, the center is closed right now, but I do know once you do go inside, it is very well lit and just is gleaming for an art center. It's just beautiful inside. Uh, maybe we'll hit this up next time we come into town. Like I said, it's a little late in the afternoon today, but maybe next time. And we'll get a little more history on this one as well. This is the one building I was looking for in town. I've been here many times, and this has always been a pretty cool building to see. This is the Weaverville Fire Department. And we have two different plaques here on the Weaverville Fire Department. I'll let Cheryl hit those up for you. Oops, Cameron Building Site. In 1852, the Cameron Brothers built a two-story building. Madame LeBachelor purchased it in 1853 and operated the Golden State Saloon, later known as the Polka Saloon. By 1855, the town lodger, lodges of ECV, Masons, and Sons of Temperance met in the upper story hall. The site was burned clean in late 1855, 1859, and 1863. Then below it, uh, Old Weaverville Fire Station, this building with its rammed earth walls was constructed by early Chinese settlers. On January 17, 1910, it was purchased by the Weaverville Fire District and was their fire station until 1949. In 1979, the local fire district, with funding from the California Department of Parks and Recreation and the local Rotary Club, built a protective structure to preserve the rammed earth walls, dedicated by the native sons of the Golden West. The first chapter of ECV in Weaverville began in 1855 after a rocky start in the Sierra Nevada gold country. The organization got a foothold in 
something hill I, I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce that in 1851 the first noble grand humbug for the Weaverville chapter was John C. Birch a local attorney who later became a state congressman the chapter flourished for several years but as miners moved along to other diggings so did the interest in ECV it was never determined when the chapter disbanded other chapters in the area included Shasta and Eureka during the same period in 1931. Yerba Buena Chapter No. 1 of San Francisco was begun as the first chapter in the revival of the organization on July 7, 1962. The Trinitarius Chapter No. 62 was born again. The chapter celebrates its 50th anniversary in the year 2012. Chapter number 62's first noble grand humbug was the late E. Rex Riley. He served for two years through the chartering ceremonies in 1963. It is estimated now that more than 120,000 members exist across eight western states. Chapter 62 has, has sponsored the humbug chapter number 73, Eureka chapter number 101, and last in Loomis chapter 1914 from its original six counties. So this is where it all started for ECV here in Weaverville. So we're going to close out our day here in Weaverville. Um, I told you that I would talk to you guys about the lumber industry. Like I said, we've kind of focused more on the gold rush today. But after the gold was deplenished here in the 1860s, 1870s, uh, they needed a new industry to come in, and that was lumber. We are surrounded by forest here. There was anywhere from 30 to 40 uh, lumber mills in Trinity County at one time. The lumber mill behind me is the only one left in existence in Trinity County. And you're probably asking, why are they watering the logs with the sprinklers? Well, I'll tell you, there's two reasons. Number one is to keep the stack of logs stable. Uh, that way, nothing falls apart and collapses, uh, nothing like that. It weighs them down, it keeps them stable. The second is to keep the wood moist and wet and not to have it dry out. Uh, they don't want that as, as well. So those are the two reasons why they are uh, running the sprinklers on the wood. And I'll tell you what, that's one hell of a stack of wood. <laughs> so like I said, we're going to finish this video off with the uh, lumber industry. Now here in Weaverville, the lumber is, industry obviously isn't what it was. They are more focused on tourism and the history of the area. Uh, the surrounding area is full. We have the uh, Trinity Lake, then we have the Trinity Alps, 500,000 acres of Trinity Alps, hundreds of miles of trails to walk through, hike through, all sorts of recreation do in this area. And that's what their focus is today, is recreation, sightseeing, and history. So the days of the gold rush, the days of the lumber mills are gone as more on the time to play recreation history sightseeing so if you guys want to check out weaverville i would highly suggest it this is a great little town i love it here and like i said it's stuck in the middle of nowhere you're 45 miles from any other big city all right, I want to thank you guys for watching this uh, segment of California Unearthed and visiting with us here in Weaverville. I figured this would be the perfect ending to this video. We just saw the Genealogical uh, History Museum, the Weaverville uh, Trinity Historical Society. And I figured this is the perfect ending just because you have relatives here in Trinity County more than likely they will be buried here at the cemetery, at the uh, Weaverville Cemetery. So we're gonna end this video here. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Put a like down below, 
make a comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.